We're back. You're watching the Jersey City Show, and you are watching it live as it happens on Comcast and live stream and everybody, uh, all our other streaming partners. Now we want to bring in our Hudson County High School sports reporter from the Hudson Reporter System, Jim Haig. Jimmy. How are you, There Brad? he is. How are you doing today? Well, I'm kind of bummed out. The Giants stink. We lost game seven of the Yankees. Cheer me up with some high school sports. Tell me what happened in Hudson County this weekend. All right. Well, St. Peter's Prep had a huge victory Friday night. Uh, so, uh, take that back. Saturday afternoon against St. Joseph's. Of this is coming on the heels of losing to Bergen Catholic uh, the Saturday before, 41-14. to 14. And I don't think anybody in their right mind thought that they were going to be able to bounce back and beat St. Joseph Monvale, who had already beaten Bergen Catholic. And lo and behold, uh, the Marauders were losing 17-7 to and came back and won the game 21-17, to uh, thanks to, again, clutch play by Masai Maynard, the quarterback who is getting better as the weeks go on. And now the Marauders are 5-2. and two. And I would have never thought that that was possible, um, especially after watching them get destroyed by Bergen Catholic uh, the week prior. So they showed a lot of intensity and a lot of guts and a lot of uh, intestinal fortitude to be able to bounce back and to be able to beat uh, St. Joe's of Montvale on Saturday afternoon at Cape and Point Cochrane Stadium. What other games caught your attention? All right, well... Uh, at, you know, from a Hudson County standpoint, Union City had a big win against against Bayonne on uh, on Friday night. Uh, they were trailing 28-21 with about four minutes left to go in the game. Uh, Isaiah Reyes, the running back, then broke one for a touchdown that tied the game at 28 with about two minutes left. Bayonne got the ball back, and it, for all intents and purposes, it looked like it was headed to overtime. And then Bayonne fumbled the ball, and Isaiah Reyes picked up the loose ball and raced 35 yards in for the touchdown that gave Union City a huge 35-28 victory. And that uh, win propelled Union City into the, the state playoffs. And talking about the state playoffs, Two local teams took huge hits over the weekend, and I think both are now out, but they were border, borderline state playoff teams, and now, unfortunately, I think both are out. One of them is Snyder, who uh, lost to Paramus Friday night at Caven Point, a game that they could have won, but they turned the ball over seven times and lost 21-14, to 14. and you just can't in high school sports or any, any football team you can't turn the ball over seven times and, and think you're going to win. And then the other one was Dickinson, who, uh, yes, was flirting with the idea of being a state playoff team just five years after eliminating the program. And um, they unfortunately lost the Fairlawn uh, 42-21, and I think that killed uh, Dickinson's state playoff hopes as well. So I uh, two crushing losses for Jersey City public school teams that had state playoff hopes, and I think now both are both out. And this is the final week of qualifying before the state playoffs begin uh, the second week of November. Now, getting back to Snyder, seven turn. What what were the turnovers? Fumbles, interceptions. Is that uh, an three extremely fumbles, high number of turnovers? Yeah, three fumbles, four interceptions. It was not good. Um, and uh, you know, the shame on them because they had a chance to. To win this game, no question. I thought they were the better team, but they turned the ball over seven times and just not going to win. And sure enough, the last turnover with about four minutes left led to Paramus's go-ahead touchdown, and that's uh, that's how the, the, the Tigers lost the game. It was terrible. Well, I guess you got to give some credit to Paramus. Their defense obviously hit hard, and they played, uh, played the field well. They picked the kid off, what was it, four times, you said? Yeah, I, th I think it was more of um, – Snyder mistakes than it was Paramus's uh, defensive prowess because uh, a lot of the a lot of the fumbles were missed handoffs and the the interceptions were tip passes. I mean, it was just a it was just a conglomeration of errors by the Tigers and it's a shame because they've come a long way uh, since Ray Marshall took over as the head coach three years ago and last year they made the state playoffs for the first time in 30 years and they were this this close to getting 
back-to-back state playoff berths and now have to have this game uh, end those hopes is terrible. Now, since we're doing the Jersey City edition right now, let's go back to Dickinson. It was five years now they've been back with a football program after That's dropping correct. it all together? All together. They dropped it. They were not competitive, and they had lack of numbers, I'm going to say, about seven years ago. Uh, then a former alum, Carlos, uh, Carlos Rodriguez, wanted to bring back football, so he pushed the Board of Ed to make sure, saying that he would come back and coach the team if they had to. Um, and then he did it for one year. They brought the program back, and then they had a coach for a couple of years who um, the team was, you know, fairly competitive but not great. I think they won three games the, was the most. And then this year they won four under a new coach, David, David Cruz. And uh, unfortunately, they, they – um, you know, they lost that crushing game with Fairlawn uh, on Saturday, and they, that pretty much ended their playoff first. Now, is there a commitment to football from Dickinson now? Um, I think there is. I think the athletic director, Rich Nesbitt, wa- you know, wants to see uh, Dickinson have a competitive football program again. I think they're, they're doing the right thing. They did the right thing in, in hiring – a young, energetic coach in David Cruz who wants to make this team win. Cruz is a, a product of Hobo, those great Hoboken programs that were coached by Ed Stinson back in the, uh, in the 80s and 90s. And uh, he's instituted the Delaware Wing T. So uh, that's, the, you know, that's the, probably the best way to get competitive as fast as possible is to have an easy offense like the Delaware Wing T, where it's all repetition and doing the things over and over again. So they're making st- strides in the right way. I just thought that this last week was just a, a win that they had to have, and unfortunately they didn't get it. Well, it's something they can build on. All right, what are we looking? we got a minute left. What are we looking forward to this weekend? All right, well, this weekend we have the Hudson County Cross Country Championships at Bayonne Park, and from a boys' standpoint, it should be an absolute war in terms of their five different individuals that could win. Um, you have Kev, uh, Kevin Keegan from St. Peter's Prep. You got Fayer uh, Nas- Nasser from McNair Academic. And you got Benedictus ba- uh, Bigo, probably the best story of the season, uh, from Snyder of all places, uh, competing for the top prize amongst the boys. The girls is wi- wide, wide open. But I think uh, a girl from Hudson Catholic uh, has got the, the front end to win there. And as a team, I would think you could look to, to the young team at St. Dominic Academy coming through and winning the county championship once again. Next week, you'll bring us what the results were? You'll I absolutely. I'll, I'll be, at, I'll be as, uh, all over the place as best as possible. Jim, I'll talk to you next Tuesday. Thank you. All right, we're going to break for commercial. That was Jim Hay from the Hudson Reporter System. He covers all the Hudson, Hudson County uh, high school sports. We're going to break for commercial. We'll be right back. 